Hey there, today we're going to head out to visit the Penn State Forest in Burlington County, New Jersey. This is a primitive and wild area of the Pine Barrens. Some of the recreation is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Blessed be our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all. Oh crap, we have to go. Are you ready to roll, honey? Yep. Are you ready to go? Yes. Okay, so we aren't there quite yet, but we seem to be heading that way. Hopefully we can open the country soon before any violence breaks out. In the meanwhile, it's time to, for us to get out and get some mental health time. And while Governor Murphy seems to think that he has the authority to shut down the public open spaces, like state parks and forests, I don't agree. So, off we are, heading for Penn State Forest today. It covers 3,000 acres, located in Burlington County. The area is used for boating, canoeing, fishing, hunting, hiking, picnicking, and of course, off-road driving. Some of the major locations in the forest include Bear Swamp Hill, standing 165 feet high and forming one of the unusual elevated areas of the Pine Barrens. In the northern portion of the forest, you will find the Pygmy Pine Plains, and of course, the man-made Lake Oswego, covering 90 acres, which was developed with picnic and bathing facilities in 1942 by the Civilian Conservation Corps. Our first stop is Bear Swamp Hill. Danger from forest fires brought about the first fire tower to be built at Bear Swamp Hill, which was a tree platform constructed around 1900. This was replaced in 1915 with a wooden lookout that burnt down. In 1960, a modern tower was erected. It's not really what's at Bear Swamp Hill, because honestly, there's not much to see. It's more about the history of what happened here, and then finding the remaining bits of evidence. Today, on the hill itself, is the foundation of the old tower. This has, unfortunately, become a party spot littered with cans and bottles. Down the path a bit are the remains of buildings associated with the tower's operation. But tragedy has struck here. On January 16, 1971, an F-105 Thunder Chief took off from McGuire Air Force Base on a routine bombing run at Warren Grove. The Thunder Chief is a single-seat, single-engine supersonic jet capable of traveling at twice the speed of sound. It was the first jet designed to release nuclear warheads at supersonic speeds. The F-105 was flown by Major William F. Demas, a United Airlines pilot who was also a flight commander with the Air National Guard's 141st Tactical Squadron. He was on his weekend assignment for the short flight from McGuire to Warren Grove. He was en route when something went wrong. He lost his life when his plane clipped the treetops and he lost control, slamming into the tower and ending up three quarters of a mile away in the forest. He left behind a wife, two sons, and a daughter. The landing gear is still in the woods, a good third of a mile hike down a hard to find trail. We were actually surprised to find that there's pavement up here, a little bit anyway. I guess when there was a fire station operated by the state up here, they had paved all the way up to the tower. There are only crumbling bits of it left now. Your is on. Here's a 
have left a while ago. Okay. No, there is no trail there. Well, this trail just goes in, you see how it is on that? Just goes in left along that road and then back out again no, over. this line. Yeah. No, that's not line, that's a grid line for the map. Right there, this is what we're on, see? Mm -hmm. Map skills class today too, wow. We're getting all kinds of stuff in. Me? Yeah. I didn't know this. Well, I just showed you too. Even though we haven't seen any water or mud holes yet, I thought we'd air down just in case. Last time we were out this way, I wasn't familiar with the roads, didn't have the winch, and we ran into water everywhere. So I feel a little more comfortable today, but a little extra added security. So do you notice anything about the trees? Yeah. Yes, they're getting shorter. So look at the tiny trees. Yes, very small trees. This would be the pygmy pine forest. Here we are in the pygmy pine plains. This is the most well-known feature of Penn State Forest and consists of primarily pitch pine and blackjack oak. But it only grows to a height of four to six foot tall. That's how it looks, right? Whoa, look at that. Early in the 20th century, Whitmer Stone described the area as desolate stretches of white sand barrens, for the most part devoid of trees higher than one's knees. All of the tree species in the pine plains are also found throughout the pine barrens. So why do they take on a dwarf form here? Most experts believe a combination of factors are involved. The plain soils are particularly subject to drought and nutrient deficiencies, and the plateaus are elevated above the surroundings making the plains subject to higher winds. Most importantly, for centuries, these forests have been exposed to fires at least twice as frequently as other pine barrens forests. These extremely harsh conditions have created a forest with trees that are stunted. We are driving through an area where a forest fire occurred last year about this time. The fire began on March 30th and burned into April. Known as a Spring Hill wildfire, the fire devastated almost 12,000 acres of forest in the Bass River and Penn State forests. The fire started on a day when weather conditions were conducive to wildfire risk and spread quickly from there. Peak wildfire season in New Jersey typically is from March through early May. During that time, fallen leaves, branches, and twigs are abundant, humidity can be low, and it's often warm and windy. Those weather conditions combined with the lack of new leaf growth make forest debris more susceptible to the drying effects of wind and sun, particularly in the Pine Lands region of the state. The dry underbrush acts as a kindling for wildfire growth. This wildfire was unfortunately started by five young men who had built a bonfire on private land. Members from the fire caught the adjoining forest on fire and things quickly escalated. The Pinelands ecosystem is especially vulnerable to wildfires because its predominant tree and shrub species are particularly flammable and the region tends to dry out quickly after rainfall because of the porous and sandy soils. So if you're out in the woods and decide to start a fire, please be very careful. Thanks for joining us today on our ride through Penn State Forest. And join us soon for part two.